today is going to come from Calinetics, and it's called an up and down. And standing, and it's always good to have a chair handy, but um, I'm going to stand between these two chairs. And you're going to bend your knees and send your tail down, and your arms are going up to the sky. Bend and arms go back. Look out in front of you and up. So we're doing 10. And breathe in, fold and unfold. Breathe in, exhale on the down. Keep your spine kind of rounded, chin to your chest. And down and up, let's do a few more. I hope somebody's counting. And two more, that's one. And that's two. And then move those shoulders around. Now the other day, last one of the class. Drop them into your back pocket. So shoulders up, roll them back, drop them into your back pocket. Your arms stay straight. And then rotate your arms. So your little finger faces forward, thumb faces back. Bring your arms behind you. Relax your knees. This is your position. And this is opening the chest and strengthening the triceps and the entire upper body. So your shoulder girdle is doing a tiny little movement. Your hips are right under your ribs. And you're gonna do 10 more, nine, eight, seven, six. Pinch your shoulder blades like you're trying to crack a walnut between your shoulder blades. Three, two, one, and relax. And roll them around. You should have a little bit more mobility and also strength in your upper arm and your triceps particularly. That's the underarm part. All righty. Let's take it to, let me get my cheat sheet here. Let's take it to a sit to stand. I have to move Mr. Slot. Um, a sit to stand just where you are. So align your body. And for those of you who have been in strength and balance, you know the proper alignment, chin, head wrap, Chin is pulled in and making double or triple chins. You're bending at the hip hinge, that's at the top of your legs, and shoulders are relaxed. So sit to stand, and if you've been doing this a while, you're not using your hands. You, if, if you're new to this, you didn't put your hands out in front, but if you've been doing a sit to stand, hands are crossed on your shoulders, your strong foot is gonna be slightly behind your other foot. And we're doing 10, fold and unfold. And so pushing down to go up. Push down into the floor. Do not look down. Look up, that's where you're going. Let's do three more. One, two, and three. And now you can do 10 more. So let's try that. This time try putting the other foot in front just for giggles. All right, head ramp, align your spine slightly diagonal, down to up 10, nine, eight, seven. Come on, I can see you, six. Four, or you might put your hands right here. Three, <laughs> uh -huh. two, one more. That's a little bit more intense. And relax. All right, bring your hands right behind your ears, not over your ears, because you won't be able to hear me. Your feet are a little bit apart. We're gonna work the core a little bit. So bend at the hip. Look down at the floor, round, chin is on your chest, and come up. So let your face go forward, 
Drop your head, chin tucked into your chest. Roll and look straight ahead. Elbows directly out to the side, not in front, but out to the side. Down, chin to your chest, keep it there. Roll up till you're all the way up. Let's do two more. Bend at the hip hinge, flat back, look at the floor, drop your head, chin to your chest, keep it there. Come up, nice and tall. And last one, flat back going down, chin to your chest, and come back up. And that really works the middle body, the core, and loosens up the classic spine. So go ahead and let's stand up and do a little lower body strengthening for our ankles and um, thighs and our calf muscles and our core. So I'm going to turn my chair, purchase the ballet bar. Maybe you'll be here by next week. All right, this is how your feet are going to be with your heels up. Now you can hold on with both hands to your chair, but do not lean forward. No leaning forward. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see. Aligning the spine, shin pulled in and the head wham. Lift the heels. You're strengthening your ankles. And it's like you're going straight down the line and up a little. Nine. Engage those pelvic floor muscles, core muscles. Seven. Heels are very high, strengthening your ankles. Six. Go a little bit lower if you can. Five. Head up, chest up. Four. Almost there. Three. Two. Oh, very slow. One more. And back up. All right, and heels down. Just circle your foot around like you're digging a hole with your big toe. And go the other way. That loosens up your ankle, all the joints in your feet, and also in your hip joint and knee. And then switch to the other side. I think this one comes from, uh, I don't know, she walking, she running, right, Bill? Circle that around. And then stretching those front thighs, muscles out, one foot directly behind the other, and then way back. And just doing that and bending the forward knee, you're gonna feel a big stretch in the back leg. Lift the heel on the forward foot. Look straight ahead, pull your chin in, keep the back heel on the floor. Lift the forward heel and lean in from the pelvis, from below your belly button, shoulders down. No slumping over, no, don't do that. Nice and tall, it's like you're pushing your tummy right into that chair and then change to the other side. Heel to toe. Take the back leg way back, and your heel is gonna start out up. Both heels are up. Now drop the back heel down, and just notice that lengthening sensation in your lower leg, also your hamstrings, and let your body weight go forward. Shoulders down, chin in, align your spine, tilt your pelvis, Instead of sticking your bum out, don't do that. Tuck it under and feel that nice, long, lengthening stretch, loosening up those hamstrings and calf muscles. And then come out of it and then shake out a little bit. All right, so that was strengthening the lower body legs, ankles, even the core, and also uh, stretching a bit. Uh, today, we're going to do the hip ramp, I mean the uh, hip um, lift, but in calinetics, we call it a hip and behind exercise. 
and it's a little bit different. Let me just say, you're not moving your hip. You're not moving this part. You're moving, moving your leg. So you're gonna be working on the abductors, the outer thigh muscles. Those are the ones that get very weak. And if you find that you, when you stand on one leg without holding on and you kind of drop to the side, then that's that outer thigh part and into the hips that's dropping to the side. So we want to keep our bones nice and aligned um, so we don't wear them out too soon. So you can hold on with one hand and definitely do. I'm going to work on the outer leg. That's what you're aiming for. And the area that we're working is where your leg comes out of your body down to just above your knee. Just that area. No pelvis. So stabilize your core area or the trunk of your body. Relax your knees. Take your outside leg out to the side. Now your hips are going to be level. And you'll have to watch yourself in a mirror or in your computer. And then roll your hip over a little bit so your knee and toe face forward. Keep your hips level. Slide that leg in a little bit so you tighten the tension. You want to work on dynamic tension right in that hip joint. Your knee is soft on the standing leg. And then you're going to lift, lift, lift just that much. If the tension is not tight, you're going like that, and that's not the exercise. So be sure the side of the leg is working against gravity. Squeeze your tush, engage those muscles, and then lift, not a bounce, but a slow lift and a lower, toe facing straight ahead, up and down, using that outer thigh muscle, and not your hip, not that. So be real tiny. It's about no more than a half an inch. All right, then shake out. You can do about 10 and then switch over to the other side. This time I'm gonna work this side, outside. Toes straight ahead, body is aligned, chin tucked in. Keep that tension, foot out to the side. So your side seam is up toward the ceiling. Your hips are level. And you can see from the contrast of the shirt and the light pants, if my hip goes up, that's not the exercise. So pay it, see if I do it correctly. Your foot is directly out to the side, not back. Shoulders are level. Rotate a little bit, tuck your tailbone under so you're nice and tall. Pull it in, keep the hip down, and then lift 10, nine, Eight, seven, see how tiny I'm moving. Six, soft standing leg. Five, four, three, two, you just got one more. And relax. Now you can do these exercises every single day. You could do 10 on one side, 10 on the other, and then go back and do 10 more, 10 more. That's what you want to work up to. Remember, this is not what you're doing. That's not it. You're not moving your hip. We'll do that in another class. <laughs> Maybe uh, we're, when we dance on Mondays, we'll move our hips, but not when we're doing that. You're using dynamic tension. That is called a calinetics hip and Does anybody have sound? 
My screen froze. Mine did too. Who's on? Victoria James. Valerie. This is Terry. This is Terry. Right. Here I we just, go. I chatted that the screen froze. Okay. Yeah. Sandy lost connection. She'll come right back. All right. Thank you. No touch. You're welcome. To where your heel is at your toe. And then bring that heel in front of the toe. This is heel toe like a sobriety test. If the cops stop you. <laughs> so it's a heel toe and you're going to feel really off balance, but that's okay. And every surface you stand on is going to make a difference too. I'm standing on a little softer surface, but you want shoes off when you do this because that's your real balance. And then see if you can take one hand away and then see if you can take the other hand away. And notice how you might be unsteady, but that's how balance works. It's sending messages to your brain. Your neuromuscular system is sending messages to your brain, to your balance centers, and getting you fixed. All right. Now let's go back to the start. That was on one side. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. So your feet are close together. We want to go progressively and go slowly because those messages have to register. Sort of like a bad internet connection. And as we get older, it takes a little bit longer. So be patient. Going fast is not balanced. That's momentum. And it's falling and catching yourself. So let's not do that. Let's go slowly. So just progressively take your foot forward forward a little more, your knees are relaxed. You can hold on, but not for dear life. Maybe just one finger. That middle finger is the best one. And then inch your way or half inch your way until you are heel to toe and bring that heel in front of the toe. So it actually touches it. You feel it like you're walking a tightrope. And we're not walking yet, we're just standing. Okay, so see if you can let go of one hand and notice how it feels and be aware. And then let go of the other hand. And you may feel a little wobbly. And that's the learning process. It's a gradual process. And then come back to standing and shake out a little bit. Jiggle and get that tissue loosened up. So that is kind of a test and something you can check on. Another test, it's not an exercise, but it's a test, is to stand on one foot. And no hands and notice where you plop over. And that's the side. If you go to one side, it's the other side that needs to be strong and hold you up. So if you go to the left, it's the right side. What we just did, the hip and behind exercise, you need to strengthen. And then do the same thing with the other side. And notice which way you go. And that's an awareness exercise because it's not strengthening necessarily, it's strengthening your awareness. And that's important. All right, the next one we're going to do requires the two chairs. And so your feet are right together. You're in your perfect posture. And you are going to look over one shoulder and bring both hands over to that chair, but your knees are still straight ahead. And then do the same thing on the other side. So you're kind of unwinding your core, loosening
opening that up, but also it's a different balance. So your eyes have to help you here. So look, and then, you know, a lot of times falls happen when we turn and look and our body doesn't know what to do when our head reels around. So the head goes, and there you go. And then both hands, both hands on the chair. And keeping that alignment. Now you might try that in the heel to toe position. It's a little bit more tricky, or you could try it in the single leg position. So here we go, turning, and you wanna go very slowly. Use your eyes. And then to the other side. And you can do that a few times and then change the foot that's in front on your tightrope. Chin in, not jutted out, not bending forward. So you're not going over the chair like that. You're nice and tall. And notice how your upper body has to follow. Chin pulled in, make those triple chins and bring both hands around to the other side. Be sure both hands, because you can feel all that shoulder and rib cage area getting a stretch. Not this, keep aligned and do that a few times. And then you can do it on one leg if you want to try that. But that's, a, that's something to practice so you can be aware and get your three body weights, your, your pelvis, your lower body, your middle body, and your head in balance and organized. So that is one of the, you know, the awareness exercises. Most, most balance exercises uh, our awareness exercises. Um, one more thing. Uh, uh, and I'll have some awareness things and things you can do to practice. Um, one more is the plank. So plank. Donna, are you with me on plank? Here we go. You can use the chair. And I'm going to turn my chair around. And I would suggest that you have your chair stable, solidly against the wall, so it doesn't slide. Plank engages your core and strengthens it. A friend of mine's sister fell yesterday. And she wasn't hurt, but she couldn't get up. And her sister, who teaches exercise, could not get her up because her sister had no core strength. And so when she tried to get her up, she was just like a noodle. So we want to strengthen this area, not just so we look good, but so that we can support the rest of the body above the head and so on. So, and it's increasingly important to balance. So we're going to start with a chair low and stretch out. Now you see why you want it right at a wall, jammed up to the wall. Squeeze your tush, your heels are off the floor, pull your tummy in, lengthen out through the top of your head and the bottom of your heels. Not this. Not this. None of that is it. You're straight like a plank, a board. And then come out of it. And you're going to hold that for about a count of 30 to start with. And then you can work up to one minute. So you'll not only strengthen your core, but your arms, your legs, so it's a great whole body exercise, and you can do it not on the floor. However, I would suggest that you work towards plank on the floor. Now remember, getting onto the floor is uh, how you get on the floor. And you can do this, 
Your arms are this way in a triangle. And you stretch out and you squeeze your tush. It's not this. It's not a down dog. Tummy in. Squeeze inward. Stabilize. No sinking. Lengthen. Create that dynamic tension. And then when you come out of it, come back up. And there you are. And you can get off the floor. But before we get off the floor, let's do a little thigh stretch and open our hip flexor. Because we sit a lot. I know I've been sitting way more than I normally would. Uh, so this joint right here gets stuck. And we want it to be very mobile. So bend both legs and then take one back. So your knee is right in line with your ear. We did this last week. Then go down low on your forearm. Scoot your leg back so it's a straight line and reach your arm by your ear. So your line is from your hand to your knee, reaching in opposite directions. And really reach. You're going to feel that in the front of your thigh. You're also going to feel it right here where your leg comes into your body. And then hold that and tend to increase it as you're there for about a count of 30 and switch over to the other side. You are lengthening your psoas muscle, P-S-O-A-S, which is your anti-aging muscle. It's also a posture muscle and one that gets stuck in a seated position when you sit a lot. So take your knee back, go down to your forearm, do a good long lengthening Reach with your arm and your knee is going in the opposite direction, counterbalancing. So you open up your body and you lengthen that and release tightness in the psoas muscle and counting to 30. And then, oh, just get a little bit more and then place that hand on the floor and push yourself up, help your legs forward. And then we're going to come up to standing. Now, a really good exercise is getting up and down off the floor as many times as you can in a minute. You may just do it once in a minute. It may take you a minute to get up. But if you can do it again and get all the way down in a minute the next day, then you've done two in a minute. And then the next day, it'll be three. And the point is, you're going to increase the number of get downs and get ups as you go through the week. So set your timer for one minute. And see how many times, and you can use the chair as a help. Get up. Go back down. Don't have to rush, but vary which foot you put down first. Vary how you do it, because when you get good at it and you're doing it 10 times in a minute, you don't want to overuse a certain side of your body because that's not balanced. So doing one side and then the other side will help to keep you balanced, both from your vestibular center, that inner ear fluid, as well as your middle body and the right side, left side, front and back. All right, we're going to go ahead and sit right now. So let's do a bit. And down to your ankles and hold on tight. Drop your head and let your head be like a sinker weight. So it helps to lengthen your upper spine, the back of your neck, your cervical spine. Big exhale, touch the floor. You can put your palms on the floor. That's what you're aiming for ultimately. So you feel those muscles lengthening, all that myofascial tissue. And then one hand on your mid-thigh, other hand on your mid-thigh, 
chin to your chest and come up so that your chin comes up last. Your chin comes up last. That keeps your neck and shoulders from jerking around and pulling your head up because they take a beating from that. Okay, so let's stand up one more time. Push down to come up and find our perfect posture. You know, nothing's perfect, but what we're aiming for is a balanced alignment. Your feet are in a position so that they look like the number 11. Your hips are right over the center of your feet. You're not sticking your bum out. You're not slumping down like that. That's an exaggeration, but any variation of that you're not doing. And relax your knees. They're not locked, they're relaxed. Arms, if they're hanging properly and aligned, your middle finger should be at your side seam. So your shoulder girdle is horizontal, spine is vertical. Head wrap, chin pulled in, make all those triple chins. It's not pretty, but it's effective. Lengthen up to the back of your neck. That actually happens when you pull your chin in. And notice how that feels. Now, maintain that posture as you take however many steps you can take forward before you run into something and walk back to your starting point. Okay, so walking forward, rolling through your feet. However far you can go, I can't go very I might take a little walk around my chair, rolling through my bare foot, finding my balance, and checking myself to be sure I haven't let my head go forward and slump down like that because that's a surefire way to lose your balance because your head is heavy and it's going to take you over. It's the heaviest part of your body. All right, so that's once you start walking, then your habits kick in and we are changing our postural habits and it's never too late <laughs> to change habits that don't serve us well. And, you know, this doesn't serve us very well because I am inclined to do that. And that's called falling. That's the F word, falling. Okay. So find your spot, shake out, take a deep breath in. I'm going to come back to the screen and bring your hands right down the midline of your body. Be sure that you're not doing this. You're still in that posture, aligned, and breathing in, reaching up to the top of the door. That's a good test. So your hands touch, your arms are by your ears, come right down, your knees are still relaxed. One more time. Now your hands are gonna reach up to the top of the doorway. Possibly reach the top of my doorway, but I'm gonna go for it. And my hands come together, so my elbows are right by my ears. And come right down and palms down. And roll your shoulders around, wiggle your hips around, knees and ankles. All that spine loosening up and give yourselves a hand, you'd be great. All right, I'm coming back to the screen. So maybe you can find something that will be similar to this little ball. You can use a tennis ball, but it's a little too round. So this really gets in the crevices. And also this is great for your hand. You know, when you're watching TV, 
you know, you can roll your hand or underfoot. And that really does um, break up that stuck tissue and uh, give your feet more access to balance. So Valerie, can you uh, turn everybody back on and unmute? Or maybe not. I think I'm in charge. There you go. Okay. Can you make me the center of attention? Yes, I can do that as well. <laughs> She's turning it off. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Oh, goody. All right. The host is spotlighted now. Oh, I love yeah. it. Okay. Now, if you have a question, this is a great time to ask it, but raise your hand. Okay? Anybody? Hey, 